Hi, I'm Dan Resnicek from Pacific Northwest Urology Specialist, and today I'm going to be comparing the Urolift procedure versus the TERP, or transurethral resection of the prostate. Both are endoscopic treatments used to treat lower urinary tract symptoms, or BPH. There are some significant differences between the two, and certain procedures may be right for one person, but not the other. So let's figure out what procedure may be right for you. First of all, the Urolift, also known as the prostatic urethral lift, is important to talk about today because it was just added to the AUA guidelines for the treatment of lower urinary tract symptoms, or, or BPH. This is important because evidence now definitely supports that this procedure works in the vast majority of patients. We can see here in this artist rendering, a cystoscope is inserted into the urethra and into the prostate. The prostate is then compressed and the urethral lift is then deployed. The implant is deployed to the outside of the prostate initially. It's then attached to the suture anchor. And there's a urethral clip applied on the other side. What this does is compresses the tissue, both the inside and outside, to open the urethral channel. The same technique is then applied on the other side. Now, in this artist rendering, this is quite slow. In real life, this is a split-second deployment. Here you can see now it's on both sides. Now the urethral channel is open. Oftentimes, uh, a total of four clips are applied. Sometimes even more, but you can see the before photo here and the after photo here. So quite a big difference between the two. And when you're looking on the inside, very big. Here's the actual implant. It's quite small. There's a urethral end piece and a capsular end piece. And next, let's talk about the TERP. The TERP, the transurethral resection of the prostate, is one of the oldest endoscopic procedures. It is still listed as the gold standard procedure for the treatment of lower urinary tract symptoms. So, which procedure is right for you? So, when we look here at the TERP, the button TERP here, uh, very similar to the other TERP as we'll show in a second, this vaporizes the tissue, so destroying the tissue on the inside of the prostate to open up that channel. Uh, in a bipolar resection or kind of a more classic TERP, here you can see the tissue is being resected and removed rather than being vaporized. They, both the procedures are basically the same. They have the same exact um, ending. And then what ha that is is it removes prostatic tissue to open up the channel. Um, here we can see that channel is now open and you can see it's no longer obstructive. And you can tell that, that the guy's gonna have a lot better urination afterwards. So let's look at the adverse effects. So from a TERP, you can expect about a 5 to 9% rate of erectile dysfunction and a 20% rate of retrograde ejaculation, or even higher in some studies. For the urethral lift, adverse effects, the big advantage, no ED, no retrograde ejaculation. There is not one new case of erectile dysfunction or retrograde ejaculation in any of the urolift studies. Compare that now to some other procedural differences. So the TERP, this procedure is done generally um, under a general or spinal anesthetic. And the urethral lift is done under a local, and in some cases, a sedation anesthesia. It's a very quick procedure. After the procedure, it's rare to have a catheter. We occasionally have to place one in, but not very often. With a TERP, catheters are required, generally for several days following surgery. The TERP destroys tissue and the Urolift compresses tissue. And last, kind of another important point is the time. Urolift is a five, sometimes up to a 15 minute procedure at most, whereas the TERP is a 60 to 90 minute procedure. So it takes a lot longer to, to do. That's why it's done under general anesthesia. So as we look at this chart here, uh, this chart here is from some of the trials comparing a urethral lift to a TERP. The TERP is in orange and the urethral lift is in blue. The urethral lift takes about a month and you're at your maximum improvement. So very quickly, your symptoms have improved and the improvement in your scores are pretty dramatic. Now, the TERP does get there, but it takes longer. It takes about three to six months to get to that point where it's equal to the urethral lift. If you look out to a year, the TERP slightly continues to improve with time as the urethral lift basically stays the same. When you look at quality of life down below, 
in this chart. Again, very similar findings. The urolift does have some limitations and needs need to be addressed. It's not for all types of prostates. Specifically, prostates that have a median lobe at this time may not be best treated with the urolift. It's also FDA approved only for prostates less than 80 grams in size and may not be better for large prostates. Last, TERP is likely better for urinary retention. There are some comparative trials at this time analyzing the difference between TERP and Urolift in urinary retention, but the data is not out yet at this time. Thanks for watching our video with us today. If you like the video, please click like below and subscribe to our channel. Add in the comments below any other videos you may want to see from us in the future. Thanks.